Next item, Mr. Mayor, is an ordinance to rezone property at 2505 Prince Street and 963 Ferris Road from 03 and R1, and the combined zoning is going to be an 01 zoning. This was reviewed by the Planning Commission at their meeting on the 19th of December of 2022, and at that time, the Commission voted unanimously to send this to City Council with a recommendation for approval. And uh, Mr. Walden, what can you tell us about it? Yes, so, so this item is also linked to the application that you're considering for conditional use permit on, on B11. Um, I think at, at one port, one time, part of this property was uh, intended for, for Eagle Bank to develop at that site. Uh, there's been several different iterations of development plans for that whole portion of Prince Street uh, west of Ferris, and, and finally a lot of the developments coming to, coming to fruition with uh, Shadrachs having presently been built. Uh, Don, Don Pepe's is, uh, is intending to build just to the east of, of that. And then now Whataburger is, is looking at this property. Uh, they've included a portion of an existing property that's that's R1 to the south. When we met with them initially, we said this is property is really tight for what you're trying to do. Uh, and so we, we encourage them to look at an additional piece of property. We encourage them to look at O1 uh, because the O1 zoning would then allow a restaurant by conditional use. And so that's what I was fixing to say. Why did they not go for C? one or C2? It, it was because majority of the development in that area has all been zoned some form of O district uh, through there. Whereas yeah, like the, the If PUD we have to, to do a north. conditional use on it, what's the point? I mean, or for I mean, zoning if it. If we have to do a conditional use to get a restaurant in there, why would you not just? I think it's, it, it's potentially to address any concerns that might exist for, for surrounding property owners. Property. There's residential area just to the mm -hmm. south yeah, of that, and this would provide. What could this come would provide next? if it's yeah. zoned directly to a, to a commercial zoning, then anything that qualifies for that zoning could go in, oh, there. in there. This provides those residents with some additional yeah. protections. But go ahead. No. Oh, that's that's <laughs> all. I, I didn't watch the planning commission, so I didn't hear all the stuff. I got I got a question. What are the residents saying about? Uh, at the at the planning commission for I think this particular application there's there's one I think neighbor to the south that had some concerns uh, principally when I think when we get to the discussion of the the conditional use they had some concerns about about buffering the property they're, they're here tonight with us uh, yeah and uh, as part of the conditional use uh, permit we we applied a condition or proposed a condition. Uh, to have a 20-foot buffer, uh, vegetative buffer between that property because there's a there's a drive towards that that south property line, and so uh, understanding that you know, hey, you, you probably want to want to have some level of buffer between the commercial use and the residential use in that situation. What a burger? Uh, yes. Hours. I, I think those are all. We can probably talk about that. In the in the use. conditional use uh, permit because those are all conditions that are if kind of restricted. They denied with the twenty four hour, mm -hmm. and and then Waterburger said that was a deal breaker. So are they still? I, I think that's probably a good. Uh, Landon's Come here to, here to Tell talk about, about that. So. <laughs> you want to get into the conditional use part an hour? No, well, I just well, want to know well, about well, the well, hours. All right, so the hours. Uh, it was asked at the planning commission meeting whether twenty four hours was a deal breaker, and it is, and so. Um, it's my understanding that Waterburger's business model is a 24-hour business right. model. Not the lobby, but the drive-thru. Right. And so nationally, if you go on their website, it says they're a 24-hour operation, except for Christmas and Thanksgiving. And um, they're, the applicant here, WAB Venture, uh, is actually uh, contractually obligated uh, to develop 40 of these across Arkansas going forward. And Conway is one of their first choices because it's a good place for business. And so they, they uh, have already started one in Fort Smith, or on Searcy, Little Rock, and Conway. And if we can make it work, then we might even get a second water burger here in town. So but, wasn't the 24 hours denied, though? In 24 there, hours yes. was, was recommend, it was recommended, recommended. from uh, the drive-through to be 
uh, 6 a.m. to 1 a.m. Right. at the planning commission. So but you we'll guys water can change that. Yeah, if, if 24 hours is not granted for the drive through then they're going to select a different location in Arkansas. And this is the location in Conway that they like. Okay, well, I mean, we promised all those residents over there when, when Neighborhood Market went in. Right. We haven't <laughs> let them expand their hours. I'm just wondering how right, kind right. of all that's And we can talk out. about that as much as you want with the conditional use. And I've got our real estate broker uh, here for the applicant as well as our uh, construction manager. So, um, but yeah, the, the hours is, is a big deal. And that's just because of the business model. Well, I got a couple things here. Surprise, surprise. But uh, I've, I've been to a lot of Whataburgers before. I've never seen one. Well, that, that's that's a good question, Mr. Jones. Uh, uh, actually, the one that was just put in in Fort Smith, uh, it abuts a residential neighborhood. Uh, similar, it's a similarly situated property there. And I reached out to their planning staff uh, earlier this week, and they have had no negative feedback from the neighbors since the Waterburger has been built there. And so, uh, obviously, every location is different, but. Uh, you know, looking at the ones that are coming to Arkansas, I wanted to look at one that had just been finished and that actually was similarly positioned in the city and they didn't have any problems, so. And with the zoning here, uh, Mr. Walden at the Planning Commission, and, and I believe he, he was getting to that tonight, that, you know, this is consistent with what Prince Street is moving towards. Uh, you know, previously it was more of a residential area, but this is becoming more of a commercial and office corridor uh, with Walmart and Chick-fil-A and Taco Bell's 24 hours right up the road. So I believe it's an appropriate zoning for the zoning issue. Um, so I, I believe that that would be appropriate to, to pass the zoning. Is the um, Russellville water burger in the same, that it's a different deal? Because it's not 24 hours. That's a different, yeah, hours. That, that's a different okay. franchise. Mm -hmm. All right. Because I went and looked on the website to yeah. see. Yeah, it's different. Yeah. And is the entrance to the Whataburger, is it on Prince? There, there'll be two. Okay, so okay. Uh, Prince Street and Ferris. Okay. Right. And so one of the reasons Mr. Walden said that we were looking at, that we're under contract for that residential lot, is to give cross access to Don Pepe's that's trying to build next to Shadrach's. Okay, and so... Uh -huh. Uh, as a community partner here, Whataburger saying, okay, I'll come in and we'll purchase this residential lot and we'll provide that that uh, cross access and it'll help act, be an extra access for Don Pepe's as well. And so you'll have Prince and Ferris entrances. Okay. Well, that is, uh, for most of us that have uh, noticed this, Ferris Road gets backed up. It's, it's, it is a bottleneck to say the least. Right. And... You know, Especially that position. Right. Mm -hmm. But anything that's going to go there, if there's going to be a second entrance off of Ferris, it's going to increase traffic. But uh, I believe the Planning Commission, Mr. Walden, gave an estimate as the average daily trips, and it was in the 1500s or something. But national average transactions at a, a Whataburger is like 750 a day. So... Uh, that, that doesn't necessarily correspond with the average daily trips that are presented, but I'm just trying to give you an estimate on the traffic there. Oh, it's going to be bad. <laughs> well, yeah. So, so, it's bad now. I yeah. mean, it's a nightmare. But, uh, but traffic wasn't the, the primary issue at the Planning Commission. The, the, the primary issue was the 24-hour uh, issue. And so, but I believe we do have our neighbor uh, here today, and I think that he might express... Uh, concerns us to the 24 hours and maybe the, the traffic as well but we do anything we can to alleviate the traffic but that's why we have two accesses so it's not all flown on the French Street not all flown on the Ferris okay. so, um, so the the traffic impacts in, in looking at it um, these traffic impacts are based on the IT trip generation manual which tends to be a little bit conservative on the high side of, of estimating um, Trips, which that's that's transportation engineers um, in general, uh, but it 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 would say it says generate based on that based on that use being the most possible intense possible use of the site, about seventeen hundred and sixty six um, trip ends per typical weekday, so 
the, when you consider what the traffic is for Prince Street, that's about 20,000 vehicles per day. So that's some of that, not all of the, the trips. It, it wouldn't, the way it would bear out when that is, gets built, it doesn't automatically mean 21,766. It means there's some, some agglomeration of that that'll be reduced because if you're going to Whataburger, you might be going to Walmart or something else in terms of the trip ends with that. Um, and then on, on Ferris, uh, it's about 7,600. So that, that's kind of the a gauge of the, the, the traffic that's on that. Ferris is typical for a, a collector level street. We have a, uh, we've got an ordinance for rezoning of property uh, in front of us right now that we mm -hmm. need to vote up or down on, and then we'll take up the, the other portion of this. Correct. Uh, yes, sir. That's okay. Is that all right, Council? Yes. yes. Okay with you. Of course. Very of course. Good. I got a question. It'll be on the condition. I got a question. No. No, you're fine. Okay. Say if we vote and pass it, mm -hmm. and they, they don't want it, if it's not 24 hours, then what happens? <laughs> We've got a piece of property sitting there at 02 or 01 instead of instead of commercial. Which well, and and right like now, that might be what's going it, to It's right now. It's there's three different zones for uh, for those three properties. There's a R1, a mm -hmm. 03, and a 01. And so this, you know, if, if the conditional use don't get passed, uh, I mean, conceivably that'd be all 01, and so it'd be consistent amongst those. Right. But, uh, but we're hoping that we can get something worked out on the conditional use as well. Make a mo motion to adopt the ordinance. I'll yeah. second it. I have a motion and a second to adopt this ordinance to uh, rezone property located at 2505 Prince and 963 okay. Ferris from 03 and R1 to 01. Any further comments, questions? I know that well, we have a neighbor sorry. here. Yeah, we're going to come on the, and, the but next But we the are next going section. to yes. the conditional use, yes. I think, is probably more appropriate with what your concerns are. Yes. Thank you, Ms. Isby. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, my concern is really the, the traffic problem. I mean, Ferris Road is going to have to be widened. So that's something the city will get to pay for. Um, whoever goes there, sounds like. So we're just putting money back for that. We have a roundabout going in at Ferris and College. And uh, I don't know about any plans in the near future to widen Ferris at this time, do we, Jacob? Or not not this time we don't. We're going to build a roundabout. Okay. okay. I and I, I definitely don't want to sound like I'm, I'm advocating for the, the client. I just This is in terms of the, the policy. So in 2003, the, the city was one of the first in the state uh, to adopt impact fees. So typically... No, those are. Yes. Uh, typically with, with most cities, when a commercial development goes in, uh, the developer is required to put in half street improvements, with that, which that ostensibly is meant to offset the increase in traffic. So uh, in terms of when, it, when they develop, they'll have to pay pretty high impact fees for the property. That is meant to pay for sort of the impact of the traffic in, in distributed. That's usually spent, uh, as the mayor said, on sort of capacity improvement type projects where you're either a widening or more, more typically it's been done as, as roundabouts. So. Thank you, Mr. Walden. Any other questions? Mr. Garrett. The ordinance 02308. Ms. Tucker? Yes. Mr. Jones? Yes. Mr. Hawkins? Yes. Ms. Webb? Uh, no. Ms. Isby? Yes. Mr. Ledbetter? Yes. Ms. Mel? Aye. Passes six to one. Uh, council, before we move to the next item, in your packet, uh, you need to swap items 10 and 11 uh, so that we'll, we'll be back in order on this on Whataburger. Mm -hmm. You all have a copy of the letter uh, that I sent and the new revised site plan. It might help if you, if you don't have it. I brought extra copies. Mr. Hawkins. All right, so we're going to uh, to number eleven on our uh -huh. schedule. Yes, sir. On and then your we're going to come yes, back. Okay, very good. Then at this point in time, we are uh, going to under or to take up consideration to approve a conditional use permit in an O one zoning district for property at twenty five O five and twenty five fifteen Prince Street and nine sixty three. 
Ferris Road. Mm -hmm. This was reviewed by the Planning Commission at their meeting on December 19th of uh, 2022. And at that time, the commission voted uh, six to nothing to forward this with a recommendation of approval with a list of conditions. And there are one dozen, count them, 12 conditions that are listed there. I think that we will have some discussion on a lot of these. So, uh, And I do know, Mr. Hawkins, we have some neighbors here that, that would like to speak to this as well. And we would love to hear from them. Very good. Uh, do we have a motion to... I'd like to hear some discussion. I was going to say I'd prefer to hear some of the discussion. We'll hear discussion first. Very good. Okay. Thank you. If you'll identify yourself when you come up and let us know where you live. Roger McDougall, uh, my address is 905 Robin Marr Circle here in Conway, and uh, the property in question here is on 959 Ferris. Okay. Uh, so I bought that property uh, and renovated, did some renovation to it, and moved my two sons into it, so now they're paying me rent. So I've got uh, my family actually in this home. You're fortunate. Uh, over there. Well, <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, you actually you got your sons you paying rent? Uh, How did you do that? It, it, it is like... <laughs> I would highly recommend it, uh, but uh, well, that's going to be there's the intersection or there's the roundabout and your house or that house that you're speaking about is right in here. Is that correct? Yes. Sir. Very yes. good. Thank mm -hmm. you. Thank you very there's much. House, and then there's, and there's a, a shop building there. A couple of things. I guess my concern about this is, um, listen, I'm as pro business as anyone, and I think that's a that's a great location. I just don't know personally if this is the best fit for that piece of property. Initially, when they came to the Planning Commission, I spoke against it, and uh, one of the things that came up was putting the 20-foot green space. What they initially presented had about two feet from my property line. So it looked like to me, from what was presented, uh, uh, they flipped the building to where it's facing Ferris now, and there's going to be an entrance about 150 feet coming off Prince, and about 150 feet coming off of Ferris uh, right there with the roundabout. I, I've got a, I can tell you, sometimes it takes us five to 10 minutes just to be able to get into our driveway right now with the traffic congestion there. That is a concern. Quite honestly, safety is a little bit of concern to me too because my concern is when it starts getting backed up like that, the way that this is configured is you're going to have somebody jumping right off Prince coming right through that parking lot, jumping off of Ferris. And uh, my opinion, it's got the potential to be a hot mess uh, at, at some point in time. And, you know, as I stated to uh, the Planning Commission, here, here's the thing. If I'd ask that you put yourself in my position or my son's that's sitting back there. Suddenly, you, you, you've got your house that you just renovated and, you're happy with, and now you've got to drive through 50 feet from your master bedroom. So it's a little bit, you know, I'm concerned there's a drainage issue there. If you look at that, that property, uh, it kind of drains from coming down Ferris, from Ferris toward my house, and twice in the last six to eight months, my shop out there has been about a foot, foot and a half in water. So whatever is done there, you know, I would ask that there'd be some consideration for drainage, that we get the appropriate drainage, because they had initially talked about a berm or something like that, you know, as a buffer zone there. But the noise and just the 24-7 is very concerning to me. I mean, it, it's my understanding y'all have had several come in front, I believe, as councilperson said, y'all have had several come in front of the council and try to get 24-7, and they've cited in the past Taco Bell well, the difference in my property in Taco Bell is it's I've got a residence there. Taco Bell is completely surrounded by commercial property that's not open and nobody trying to sleep at night. So those are, you know, uh, again, uh, I think it's a great location. It's probably a great location for the right business. I just don't know that this is the right thing for that corner. So thank you, Roger. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Thank thank you. you. Would anybody else like to speak on this issue? All right. Uh, Council, would you uh, tell us your name? And Landon address? Sanders. Thank you. Very and I'm, I'm at the Sanders firm on 306 Salem. Thank you. Yes, Appreciate sir. It, Landon. Thank you. Um, 
I appreciate Mr. McDougall's interest in this, and I understand that he's the residential neighbor. I gave the example from Fort Smith a little while ago, and I do understand Taco Bell is situated differently uh, with no residences in surrounding it. Um, we do have other businesses that have operations 24 hours on Prince Street, though. I believe Kroger has a stalker 24 hours a day. I believe that they have uh, bay access 24 hours a day, and that abuts residential property. That's just right up the road. I understand the, the traffic concerns as well. Um, I, I believe that Mr. Walden addressed that. Uh, but what this comes down to is, you know, these folks want to invest in Conway. It's going to be, an, well, they estimate it would be about a $3 million build and conservatively bring in uh, $5 million in uh, annual revenue that's taxed. And they would bring upwards of 100 jobs to the community, which is big. And so they want to be this community partner. We just have to give them the opportunity to. Um, you know, there's been a lot of talk on Facebook. I believe I attached some of those to my letter to you guys. Folks in the community want this, uh, want this uh, water burger, um, but I do understand Mr. McDougall's concerns. We've done everything we can to try to alleviate those concerns uh, with fencing, screening with greenery. Uh, we've offered mounding, that sort of thing. The only thing that we haven't done uh, is agreed to purchase his home, which he's made that offer. So, um, you know, but we've done everything we can to be a good neighbor there to him and to Don Pepe's. So um, anything that we can do with, with lighting, uh, I believe the LED lighting would, would not be intrusive to his property. The sound, the way that this was, re, the, the revised site plan is actually a lot better for his, uh, for his property for privacy and for sound. And so I don't know if y'all have seen the old version versus the new version, but this is a lot uh, more uh, conducive to his privacy interest there at his house. So... Um, with that being said, uh, I don't know what else I can say about this, but it's a good good opportunity for Conway. But if you guys have any questions, I'm here to answer them. Uh, I got it. Oh, uh, you said it's going to be 100 jobs? At, yeah. yeah, upwards of 100 jobs. <laughs> okay, and another thing is you were talking about Kroger. If I remember correctly, I've been on this council for a while. We had them put that buffer up there with the fence, didn't we? Mm -hmm. yeah. And we would it's do not anything. 24 hours, is it? Oh. No, no, no but they I have. At the gas yes. pumps, maybe. I, I don't know. Are no. You? No. 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 Okay. Okay. Um, the trucks come in to stop. Stop. Oh, okay. Stop. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Thank but you. It's, but yeah, that's it's on a, the south side. Yeah. yeah it's mm -hmm. not. Yeah. Um, I will say, um, yes, I know there has been a lot of hype on Facebook as well. Oh. And, um, I frequent a Whataburger in Louisiana when I'm right. visiting my children. Uh, that Whataburger, of course, does not abut any type of residential area. Also, this morning, I made it a point to go down Ferris and veer from my normal travel to my office. And at probably 7.50 this morning, trying to navigate that roundabout with school traffic, people coming down that. I understand and appreciate what all Mr. Walden has said, but I think that is going to be particularly trying to turn in from Ferris a hot mess. And I have some of those same concerns. Um, we have always tried to work between neighbors and businesses. Um, I think we voted, of course, for the 01, but I think from this council, that's simply because that's what the current zoning is on there. So I don't want people to misconstrue the fact that we voted in favor of the zoning that's being sought, that that was in any way, in my mind, any reflection of a 24-hour restaurant there. Um, I think there are probably other areas I would welcome Whataburger here. I just don't think that this is the appropriate place for it. If I can respond to that, that would sure. be great. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have our real estate broker here, and, and I think he'd be great to answer the question about the location issue and comparatively to other locations. Mm -hmm. um, but as far as 24 hours, I don't think this is going to cause a congestion issue in the, between the hours of 1 a.m. and 6 a.m. when the, when the Planning Commission uh, uh, voted for it to be um, closed. 
if it was to be open during that time, I don't think that's going to be a congestion issue. Uh, I do understand your concerns about morning time because it's school traffic, you know. And afternoon. And, and afternoon. And school. ball games. Yeah. And yeah. <laughs> But, you know, we have a similar situation with Chick-fil-A on Prince Street, you know, mm -hmm. causes a lot of traffic. So um, I, I understand that. But um, uh, anyways, I'd, I'd welcome David Elrod to come up and to speak uh, about the location issue. Yes, my name is David Elrod. I'm a real estate broker. I've been involved with the two previous uh, Walmart and Sam's locations here in town. I was involved in the neighborhood market location, and I was also involved in the Sam's location. And uh, both those situations were, as you know, our first location for Walmart, the neighborhood market, was to go to Pompey Park. And we were going to buy that seven acres, or the whole 20 acres, give 13 acres to the city as a park and keep the seven acres for for the Walmart. That didn't get passed, it didn't get passed. And so instead we went to the family's property that's right next to the ballpark. And as you know, at that time too, we worked extensively with the church and they were very cooperative and worked with us. And we also worked with, uh, we were gonna put gas there where the Chick-fil-A is. And we decided the council didn't want that in the church, so we ended up putting the putting the Chick Fil A. But um, this location has always been that corner has always been a little bit noticeable or contentious, whatever however you want to uh, phrase it. But it's it's worked with the we've worked with all the neighbors there over the time period. If you recall, this was originally going to be this location that we're looking at now with Eagle Bank was going to be a come and go at one time. It was never going to pass. Right, right. <laughs> it wasn't happening. <laughs> and, and, and I understand your concerns about traffic, but a lot of that traffic, if you go over there, is, is a lot of school buses. And those school buses, if you, I mean, there's a lot of school buses that go through there, and I've sat there and looked at them, and they may be a school bus that seats 30 with five kids on it. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying anything about the efficiency of the Conway Transportation Department the school district, but that could – that could be alleviated some with, with good planning. But you gotta realize that every intersection has issues. I mean, I live in Little Rock, we have issues from 750 to 830. There's not an intersection almost in America that didn't have issues. That's when people go to work. But all during the day, you're not gonna have those same issues. You have, it flows. Y'all have done a wonderful job with your, with your roundabouts. It keeps traffic flowing through the community. There's not the stop and go of the community. And yes, Walmart has 24, they have stalkers there at night. Kroger has stalkers there at night. Kroger has a loading dock on the south side of their property where they, where they drop those trailers at different times in the morning that come in from Memphis for those neighbors. We don't have any of that. And uh, it's hard to find a site in Conway, and I can't really think of one, if y'all know of one, please let me know, that has an intersection on the corner that, uh, densely populated that's anchored between two grocery stores. I mean, we've looked, for example, on Oak Street, which is a corridor that's one of the most busiest corridors in Conway. You can't find any sites because the owners won't sell the sites or, or it's a bank was there and it's owned by an individual and they're not selling. So it's difficult to find a, a suitable site. And this site's been vacant for, well, probably, what, 10 years now, 15 years? Yeah, and, and Mr. Pompey had the property next door, and they're, they're redeveloping that. And even there, too, I think a little bit further to the west, aren't they putting in a coffee shop, I believe? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it flows well. The, the big thing you have on this property is you don't have people that are coming from the east are not, because of the roundabouts, they're not cutting across, so there's no stacking. So they'll flow through the roundabouts and come back through. So we have cross access with the other owners, too. If you have any questions, I'd be feel to ask, but it gives you kind of a history of our developments in Conway. Thank you, David. Appreciate it. Anyone else like to speak for or against? Council, it's back to you. I'd like to say something is going to go there someday. Mm -hmm. something is I don't there. know what it's going to be, or and it's going to create traffic, whatever it's going to be, so... You know, I don't know it's how the bad. traffic. It's not going to be 24 hours, though. No, no. Yeah. Well, 
but you're going to have traffic there no matter what's there. And I don't know what we can do about the traffic. Let me let me let me step up for just a second if I could, and I won't bore y'all with much of this, but there there's it and it depends on who you talk to, but I might have made a couple of bad decisions on this council since I've been on it as long as I have. One of them was the Taco Bell granting 24 hours at that location. And and we can talk traffic all we want to, but the people that have property over there, I looked them in the eye years ago and I said, we're not going to put 24 hours on you. We're just not going to do it. Uh, we would love to have, we would love to have Whataburger. I think they'd be a great addition to our community, but I'm not for putting it that close to residential on a 24-hour situation. So that, that's where I'm coming from tonight. Okay. And additionally, I was on the planning commission when the Walmart and all that went in, and we looked those people dead in the eye and said, we will not do 24 hours. And they came back several years later and asked for it again, and we upheld that. So I'm pretty, I'm pretty stuck on the 24-hour thing. I am as well. I agree with you on the 24 hours, but as far as the traffic goes. Yeah, I mean, it's the going traffic. There, yeah. 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 Well, and if something was going to, I didn't mean to interrupt you, I'm so sorry. Um, nope. But I think it might be a good idea to get that roundabout built first. Whatever needs to be done to Ferris Road, done first. Then look at this property as far as putting something there, because it isn't a matter of 6 a.m. to 8 a.m. that this that Ferris is, is busy or congested. It's the times I've seen it, it's been middle of the day. Two o'clock, one o'clock, three o'clock. It's backed up almost to college. Oh, we just have a lot of traffic in that it's, area, period. Just yeah. Conway mm -hmm. just has a lot of traffic oh. out there. And, and we, no yeah. no way to get a get through there except for mm -hmm. I mean the roundabouts have helped a whole lot. Right. But there's just a lot of cars. Mm -hmm. Sure. And I think something you know, like you said, something's gonna go in there. I just don't know that a drive through restaurant is oh. the best idea. I don't Well, I don't think uh Yeah uh developing the other roundabout has anything to do with the twenty four hour status that we're looking at. We're talking And if about Whataburger it. says that's a deal breaker, then we don't have anything else right. to discuss. Mm -mm. Okay. <laughs> Well, correct. I most certainly do not want to get in Whataburger's business, but I do know, know that the uh, owners of the property were, were interested in selling. Um, that may be something y'all can work out with them. I don't know if it would change this council's mind or not, uh, if that property were not there, but that's that may be an option for y'all to, to try to work out. Council, is back to you. I'd like to make a motion that we... we uh, Pass this with the time set that the planning commission came up with the operating hours. Make a motion. That just that was it. <laughs> <laughs> with the no, with, no. With the conditions. With the twelve conditions. Mm -hmm. Yes. I'll second that. And and re recall and, so and Charles can, can probably it. help us. With any ordinance or resolution, it's better for us to make a motion to approve it, and then if you want to vote against it, right. it's a lot clearer to everybody watching. Yes. yes. Yeah, and so just to be clear, on conditional use permits, when the city council reviews it, which is what y'all are doing right now, you have a number of options. The city council can grant the application as presented, which is what I think was has been proposed mm -hmm. with those conditions. Uh, grant the application with a, with other or additional conditions or restrictions so you can modify it, deny the application, or remand the case back to the Planning Commission for additional consideration. So you basically have those four, approve it as presented, which would be with the conditions as stated uh, at the Planning Commission and approved by the Planning Commission, modify it, deny it, or send it back to the Planning Commission. Charles, if we were to have a positive vote, on the 12 conditions that are here currently, what would our rule be on them bringing it back? 
on who bringing it back. If they decided to bring it back to look at the additional, at the 24 hours, I think we have a rule that if you can't bring it back, if it's, after a certain if it's denied. Yeah, if, if, you, if you all approve it with the, with the 12 conditions uh, indicated mm -hmm. that, were, that were passed by a planning commission, and let's say that they, they don't like that, they would mm -hmm. have to go all the way through the process again. So it would go through public hearing, planning commission, back to city council, because it would so be an amended the, conditional use permit. Would they have to wait a year or no? Uh, no. Not for a okay. Use. Okay. No. Well, That's what I wasn't get, sure. You'd have to get two-thirds of this body to vote on that. To vote in favor of to it. To vote in favor of hearing mm -hmm. it again. You know, so you'd have to have six votes. For conditional use? I think so. As I understand it, James I mean, can correct me, if it's, if it's denied, they have to wait. The twelve month period, unless the the council by two thirds vote chooses to uh, impose a lesser period, but that's if it's denied. It would be considered yeah, terminated, yeah. as I read the zoning code. Okay. Well, yeah. If you yeah, if you read it, that's exactly what it says. So, so we had this issue once before, not too long. Ago. <clears throat> and if you all know it, I'm a little bit better prepared this time. I appreciate that, man. You're welcome. <laughs> okay. So we have a motion and a second. To approve with the 12 conditions. Correct. Good. Any further discussion? Landry. Mr. Garrett. There we go. Okay. All, All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? No. 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 Okay. Would the ayes raise their hand, please? Wait, let's hold it. We're voting to approve it the way it is. The way it is. With the 12 conditions. 12 with conditions. The, with, uh, which not does not allow hours. 24 Without hours. Without the 24 hours. Okay. So would the ayes raise their hand, please? Three and the nose. Fails three to four. <laughs>